robot almost a hundred years ago. Could the prophecy of machines and humankind living alongside each other in this world be rather old-fashioned? We have to consider the possibility of a completely different future, one that nobody foresaw. I mean the digital one, all bits and bytes, not my beloved nuts and bolts. In the digital future, the convergence of human and machine wouldn't take place in this world. It would take place in a virtual one, generated by computers. Okay, James, if you mind just looking into the top lens up here, we're going to take the first scan. I'm being transformed into an avatar. For older viewers, that means a digital representation of myself. In the name of progress, every pimple, blackhead and stray nose hair must be recreated digitally. Face done, now for the body. To do this, I need to undergo a motion capture process. Inevitably, it involves me wearing a ridiculous outfit. Right, this is how it works. On my body, 32 extra nipples made out of a reflective material. This booth is bathed in an infrared light. The infrared light is reflected from the nipples. There are six infrared cameras around the room. They pick up all these spots of light and they feed all that information to a computer. Now, because the computer knows the position of the cameras, when I move around and do this sort of thing, it picks it up, puts it in the computer, turns it into a digital James May. Right. <laughs> Having recorded my best moves, it's time for the computer wallers here at University College London to build my digital twin. Right, I'm ready to meet my avatar. Not just some off-the-peg avatar from a cheesy video game. This one is bespoke. It is me and only me. And that's why we're back in this room where we did the motion capture because this is also a sort of portal to cyber world. All of the walls, and the floor in fact, are screens. And I, or he, or it, or whatever it is, will appear in the middle and I'll be able to look at he, it, me from every angle. In order to do that, I have to wear these special 3D glasses. Now, this isn't going to work in 3D at home, I'm afraid, because your television is 2D and rather backward, frankly. Anyway, bring me on. Here I come. Ooh, uh, whoa. It's... <laughs> That's wit. Oh, hello. Hello. <laughs> he, I, really do appear to be right there. I can actually, by moving my head, I can see myself from different angles. It really is a three-dimensional thing. You know, there's the, the other side of me I can't see from here, but if I move around, I can do that, I can look at my own nose. I do believe that I should actually feel my shoulders like that, or my arms, my elbows, and my fingers. It does look like me, and stands like me, and has my face, my stupid hair, Although I also have to say that I appear to have been given a sort of 19th century consumptive pox, as if I've been going up chimneys since I was 13. It's, <laughs> it's not just like having a ghost with no substance, but it's a ghost of me with a disease. 
So, there you have it. A James May suitable for the 21st century, ready to sally forth and explore the wild frontier of Cyberland. And, to be honest, he's welcome to it, because I know the virtual world will become ever more important, but somehow, I'm just more of a moving parts kind of guy. <laughs>